I'm gonna delineate this once and quickly and I'm not coming back to it again. I will never ever again restrict any food source as long as it's a whole food and comes from a source that I want to support. Good morning, YouTube. Homegrown Big coming at you again on the weekend. A little worse for the wear. I worked 60 hours this last week doing pretty intense physical labor, and I'm in recovery mode now. And you'll see here, this is not coffee. This is chaga. Chaga is one of my favorite food-based uh, support, whatever. <laughs> I fully and firmly believe in and employ the use of mushrooms not only for their culinary purposes but also for their medicinal purposes and I tend to think they're a little bit magic. Um, chaga is known as one of the highest sources of antioxidants and I use it when I really push my body physically to the maximum to help keep me healthy and so I love a little chaga. Let me know if you use chaga. Uh, I want to talk today about what we know about human nutrition and why I've started making the choices that I have. So <clears throat> a lot of people have asked me, well, if you, for whatever reason, can't be vegan for, for your physiology, for your health, then why do you just go straight into um, sentient creatures like cows and pigs instead of like using eggs or mussels? or these sort of foods. And I'm gonna delineate this once and quickly and I'm not coming back to it again. I will never ever again restrict any food source as long as it's a whole food and comes from a source that I want to support. So I don't support industrial animal agriculture. And that's a separate video. But coming back to food sources, I will never again restrict food source. And here's why. We don't know all of the nutrients yet. People have been saying for 20 years now or more that a vegan diet or a 100% plant-based diet has all of the nutrients you could ever possibly need. And I contend that that is a completely erroneous and false statement. Um, and it took me going through school and learning more about biochemistry and science to really understand that those are truly false claims. Um, we are just getting into the technology that we need to really understand nutrition science. The reason why nutrition science is such a young science is for that reason. We have not had the technology and the methods and the capacity to really research it and know that we know everything about it. Um, just as recently as 2003, I believe, was the publication, uh, we found another vitamin. It's known as PQQ. Some people argue that it's a cofactor, not a true vitamin. But nonetheless, it's a nutrient that humans need. Vegan is, veganism and plant-based eaters were claiming way before that without knowing about that nutrient that plants have everything that we need. Now, lucky for the uh, plant warrior cause, PQQ is actually is found in plants, which is great. Um, it's needed for healthy hearts and brains and that makes total sense. Um, but when we look at more pragmatic middle road food oriented um, teachers and mentors we see really different information put out there now one of my favorite people that I've learned from and directly and from her books is Marian Nestle if you don't know her and you're into food and you're into food politics and you're into animal activism and you're into healthy food and healthy environment I highly recommend her writing she is brilliant she is fair, she is well-researched, and she is doing really, really important work, and she is making grounds with the work that she's doing. So Mary Nessel wrote this a seminal book called Food Politics, 
and uh, that's just one of her many books. Um, but she is really into getting corporations out of food, taking food back away from the industry complex. Um, human nutrition and food should not be, as far as I'm concerned, um, an industry profit-driven commodity. Uh, back to my point. She is very clear on pointing out that humans should eat a plant-based, plant-focused diet, but not necessarily vegan or 100% plant-based. And she knows, as well as most other nutrition researchers, and this is a good question as to why Colin Campbell, with his, his own product, he's, he's, he's gone from being a researcher into a profit-driven product producer, uh, is not talking about this, and this should be talked about. But she's very clear, and you'll see right here in this quote, that we just don't know yet what all of the nutrients are that humans require. It's an unknown variable. And the only way, in my opinion, to make sure that you are getting all of the nutrients that you need and not falling into nutritional ditches on restricted diets is to not restrict food sources. So there may be a nutrient that we don't know about that's in normal traditional foods that we've been eating for hundreds and thousands of years, such as pork, such as um, game, such as red meat, that is not in mussels, that is not in eggs, that is not in plants. And it could be very, very well the case that certain people genetically, and maybe this has to do with older genetics from when we evolved, when we were more plant-based compared to modern humans, that some people have the capacity to biochemi biochemically take substrates and manufacture that nutrient for their bodies. But there are a lot of people who have, through genetic variation, lost those capacities. So considering my history of experimenting with plant-based foods and veganism and finding that I'm incapable of maintaining stable physiological homeostasis, I will no longer limit any food source. And I personally think that most people should not limit food sources. I think it's reasonable to experiment with veganism. And if you do well, awesome, stick with it. I think that's great. And I also think that there needs to be veganism. A lot of people are thinking that I'm just like slandering veganism or talking against it. And that's not the case. I think veganism as a ideology for animal rights is very important because there needs to be checks and balances to the animal agriculture industry that is really treating animals poorly. So that's all I'm going to say about this. Quick video. I've got so much more coming up like why I think supplementing is a really terrible idea and what I've learned along the way about that in my education. Even though I do promote some supplementation as a stop loss, but regular supplementation I think is a really bad idea and I'm going to talk about that. All right. Hope you're well. Let me know what you think. Good or bad. I don't care. It's a discussion. We'll see you next time.